palestra aqui do ciclo Debian. É, não temos mesário para essa palestra, tá? Por opção do Daniel. Só vou fazer uma rápida apresentação dele. O Daniel trabalha no Debian. Ele é, ele é desenvolvedor, ele faz empacotamento no Debian. E ele é do time do, do Live CD, da distribuição Live. E ele também é do time de Forense. Ele é um dos coordenadores do time de Forense do Debian. Tá? E, então, com vocês, Daniel. Ok. First of all, um, I'm very sorry for the delay. I just broke my notebook. Um, I have Debian Unstable on it, and I rebooted uh, like two weeks ago, the last time, and always suspended. But now, uh, when I reboot it uh, for a different kernel, uh, X11 doesn't come up anymore, and yeah. But I'm happy that we have found another one. Um, second of all, um, Thanks very much uh, for having me here. It's my first time in Brazil, and it's very amazing. Um, third of all, if you have any questions, just shout. Uh, don't, don't wait until the end. So today I'm speaking about Debian Live. Uh, first, uh, who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Then about the Magic Duo Live Init MFS and Live Helper. And the demonstration, I'm sorry I can't do, but uh, because my notebook broke, uh, I have a local mirror in order to speed things up, but I think it won't, won't work on your notebook. Don't mind. You have a local mirror on your notebook? You're crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, who we are? Um, the core team exists uh, since like 2006, and we are this bunch of people uh, from different countries. Especially note, um, please especially note that uh, Otavio is also helping out. I think he's quite famous in Brazil. And uh, there are uh, another two Brazil people. Uh, doing very much contributions to Debian Live. One is uh, Terciero. He has done all the uh, translations um, in Portuguese. And uh, Tiago is helping out uh, on a lot of bug fixes all the time. And they are really invaluable help. So uh, you see there are already like three people from Brazil helping. And if any one of you wants to help, uh, you are in a good company. So probably the most of you know what Debian is, so I keep that one short. It's one of the probably biggest uh, distributions. Uh, you see the numbers. It's just uh, to get the order of magnitude. 1,000 developers, about 10,000 contributors, 50,000 source packages. Uh, and there are rumors that there are like 10 or 15 million users, but nobody knows exactly. So, how many of you have already used the live system? <laughs> okay, great. So, I will not go into much details about uh, just explaining what a live system is, but basically, um, it's just a normal system that is 100% equal to a normal system, just that you don't install it, you just run it. Typically, that happens from a, a read-only media, like, for example, a CD-ROM uh, or also USB sticks. And then, um, usually, uh, if you break anything during your run it, uh, you just reboot, and the changes you did are all, all, are all gone. So it's a kind of safe way to try things out. Uh, another um, particular important thing is that a live system, per definition, shall never touch any stuff on your computer. So if you have a hard disk in your computer, usually, uh, with another operating system, and you start a live system, you never touch that system. Because a user wants to use a live system, uh, for example, to ref log in in the system and at which day, or something like that. And for that, uh, we are using AUFS. That's a, a union file system. 
that's a union uh, file system in the kernel that allows to um, redirect write accesses to the normal file system to a RAM disk. So whatever you change, uh, it uh, ends up in the uh, in the RAM of your computer. Of course, uh, that has a bit of, of a problem. Even. Uh, it has uh, disadvantages. For example, um, in the current situation where you boot a regular untuned Debian system, you touch a lot of files during the boot time. So um, you end up with about like 50 megabytes of, of changes just for booting because you touch such a lot, lot of files. That, on the other hand, means that any computer that boots with such a system needs to have at least 50 megabytes of RAM. Nowadays it appears that it's not so much of a problem anymore, but um, let's face it, it's not um, suitable for embedded systems. So, um, for those who don't know any drama test tools, that's the, the tools that uh, create that mini system that binds the, the root system when, when booting. Um, it's totally uh, shell code only. So it's very easy to understand, very very easy to debug, and uh, the benefit is that it's architecture neutral. That means we have only one package in the archive and it works on every architecture there is. Um, Life init DramaFest, which consists of the hook that changes that mount function in the normal init DramaFest tools, um, uh, integrates very well with the rest of the structure. That means uh, you can have uh, Life Init DramaFest installed on a normal system and it won't hurt you. Unless you boot uh, with boot life, that's a boot parameter you have to give in order to activate that different mount uh, call. Um, every distribution apparently does its own thing. So Debian has now Life Init DramaFest, uh, Ubuntu uses Casper, Fedora has some different things and all work, uh, in theory, all work the same, but there are different implementations. Um, fortunately, I can say that the one from Debian is, apart from the fact that it supports the most features of all, it's also one of the fastest one. There's even a better news. <laughs> we, can, we can make it even faster. Um, Life in Drama Fest um, originates from, from, from an early version of Casper, which was uh, done by Ubuntu but they have like a totally crappy design. And um, this one, this summer, I'm going to rewrite that uh, from scratch so that uh, all the stuff which does not need to be done in the very early user space is going to be moved to the late user space. That gives us like 10 or 12 seconds faster boot time just because of that. And this uh, affects every uh, installation, not just live uh, installations. So, um, as I said before, like in the drama fest is that that little thing that changes the, the mount uh, routine from any drama fest in order to search for the live media. But uh, it does also other things. One of the other things is that uh, it allows to uh, change the keyboard layout through a boot parameter. Imagine you have a, a live CD and you uh, go to a shop and uh, you want to uh, test, for example, uh, a Portuguese keyboard layout. Then you boot with keyboard equals PTBR and then uh, you can use that keyboard. Imagine you go with the same, same live CD to another uh, computer which has like, uh, let's say Swiss German, <laughs> then uh, you boot the same live CD with a different boot um, parameter and you can still uh, work uh, as, as you like on that keyboard. Um, these days, um, such static things like the keyboard uh, are very few things to do, and the most things are done automatically anyway. For example, um, the X11 uh, configuration is done completely automatically. You, uh, we don't need to do anything anymore in Life in the Fest. It just detects what card there is and uh, finds the optimal values for it. Also. Um, 
the language is auto detected from root parameters. Um, this influences uh, what your live system looks like. For example, um, in GNOME or OpenOffice, um, what the menu what the menu uh, is written in a language. Mm. What language is used to display the menu? <laughs> um, then, the, so those are all the things we do enable um, during uh, booting of the live system. But there are also things that we want to disable. For example, in some cases, it doesn't make sense if you have a, a normal desktop live system that has a, an email server installed. So even if it's installed, you don't want to run it. So therefore, we provide hacks uh, to easily allow that to disable such services. Or for example, on most systems, it doesn't make sense that you have an update manager running. If you use um, like a desktop, a standard desktop Debian installation, you have an update notifier icon uh, in, the, in the menu bar, um, and it tells you uh, you should update your system. But on a live system, especially if it's a CD and not a USB stick, it does not make sense to do that. So that's also the same place where we disable such stuff. Then live in the also has to handle uh, persistency. Uh, imagine you have uh, a USB stick. Um, USB sticks are per definition uh, writable, so it would make sense that you can actually uh, plug in your USB stick somewhere, then you work, you create your documents, your graphics, your music files, whatever, and as soon as you want to leave, you just plug, plug out the USB stick, go uh, home, for example, plug it in again and uh, continue to work. And then you want to keep all your settings, all your documents you created before, and that's why we have persistency. Persistency means that um, the original file system, uh, which contains only the life, the life system stays as it is, it's not modified, but we have another layer uh, where we uh, put only the changes. And we can read those in uh, while, when we boot the system. And um, for persistency, yeah? How about the wear of the, the USB, the, the flash? The flash? So, um, as he correctly pointed <coughs> out at the right moment, <laughs> on uh, most flash devices you have a problem with uh, uh, finite write cycles. So on a USB stick you can make like 100,000, I think, cycles on the same uh, uh, flash cell and then it's worn out so it just breaks and you can't use it anymore. Um, therefore, uh, if you would use persistency, every time you write, you write to the flash. That's very unfortunate. So therefore we have another mechanism that's called snapshots. And with snapshots you only write at the at uh, the very end uh, of, of the session of your live system to the USB stick. That means, uh, let's compare. In the case of persistency, you write all the time. As soon as you create the file, it uh, gets dumped to the USB stick. If you use snapshots, it stays in the RAM disk the whole time, but at the end, when you shut down, this difference, this, la this layer where all the changes are, gets dumped to the USB stick. So, so you have only one write. And uh, in, when, when you boot again, um, it's uh, read in, so uh, you can continue your work the same as it works with persistency. <laughs> okay. um, there is another nice feature. Uh, we also su uh, support encryption. So you can use, for example, AES, A AES256 uh, algorithm in order to encrypt your whole root file system so that, for example, um, if you go to the US, um, the customer is allowed to take all your electronic devices away for inspection without justifying why. Not just your notebook, they can also take your photo camera or your USB stick, anything that's like, that looks like uh, consumer electron electronics. So imagine um, you go visit a friend in the US and you take your USB stick with, uh, with you that has like, uh, photos from home that you want to show to your friend, but you don't want the custom to see to to see them. So what you do is you encrypt. 
It was a question or? Okay. So what you do is uh, you encrypt the root file system and um, when you boot, you get asked about the password. Usually you use like a very long passphrase uh, and only then the system is bootable. So um, in case the custom at the US border seizes your USB stick, you only lose the USB stick but not any uh, they cannot, they cannot uh, touch your system. They cannot even boot it. Um, Live initramfs is also very nice because in case you are familiar with preceding, um, this is a mechanism to answer, uh, to ship uh, answers to questions that the system is asking uh, during installation. For example, um, I guess most of you have done uh, a Debian installation and there the installer is asking a lot of questions and you can fa uh, put uh, the name of the question and the answer to that question in a special file and you can pass it to the Debian installer and Debian installer will completely non-interactively install the system according to that questions uh, to that answers you gave him. And Life in Trumpfest uh, supports that as well. So you can use for the same mechanism you, can, uh, you use for DI to install systems non interactively. You can also use to configure Life in Trumpfest at boot time. So now I have uh, talked a bit uh, about how the Life system is set up. Um, that means that's all runtime stuff. That's what is used and happening all the time when you boot the live system. But the actual interesting thing is, how do you create a live system? And what's the best way to do it uh, if, you just, if you don't do it for one time, but for like 10 times or for your next whole year, or if you do it uh, for your whole family? As you probably know, uh, Canopix is one of the most um, prominent life systems out there, but it's also one of the worst. And as you can see, um, why would someone read any of those books uh, that, that tell you uh, how to remaster and configure and tune Knopix if it's that easy? You can do it with this little command and you get uh, a KD desktop uh, that's more or less similar uh, like what is Knopix doing. Um, recently, Knopix switched to LXD, so that example doesn't match uh, the recent ones. But uh, if you want LXD, just write LXD desktop instead of KD desktop. Or if you want GNOME, you write GNOME, then you get GNOME. So, Life Helper is that tool uh, kit that can build life systems for you. Currently, uh, it exists of, of over 17 little shell scripts because we believe that um, for every little task you have a little shell script because that's very easy to understand. Um, we have sorted them in like two layers. There are the porcelain layer uh, and there is the plumbing layer. It's uh, sort of inspired like what we do uh, or what uh, the Git guys do. Um, if you really want to know every dirty little secret, you would call like all the 70 uh, commands uh, each after one in the real right position uh, of the whole build process and you would need to know a lot. But you could do it that way and you would have total control. But of course that sucks, therefore we have, uh, we have the porcelain layer, that means um, you can uh, build a live CD with two commands as shown before. Currently you can build, AMD, you can build uh, images for AMD64, ISO 86, PowerPC and Spark. And we are looking to get more done as soon as I get hands on the real machine because I need, I need like local access to test them. And um, currently the, the four different media types that we support are regular CD-ROMs or DVDs, that's just the same. Then USB Im images for USB sticks. Netboot, as you know, uh, with Pixie. Um, so you can uh, boot with DHCP and Pixie. Uh, and then you can have like NFS. You can, you can share the, the root FS for NFS or Samba. Or, uh, that's the most interesting one to me personally. You can also boot over the, uh, 
over the network, um, over internet, uh, over HTTP or FTP. Um, that means you can you can uh, build a live system that contains only of the kernel and the init RT. That's like four or five megabytes, I guess. And all of the rest uh, is taken out of the internet. And you can uh, we have those files on live.debian.net. So uh, given that you have a good internet connection, uh, you can really boot from there. Um, what you see on this slide is the most important things ever, because that's what makes Life Helper uh, unique and uh, what's the real invention here. As you know, I showed, I showed this, uh, this overview uh, about books uh, that explain how to remaster Knoblicks. The bummer with it is that they're using a totally broken approach. They say that, um, look, we have here a Knoblick CD. This works uh, uh, as some guy did it, and if you want to change something, you take the whole CD, change that little thing, and then uh, you put it together. And imagine you have like 10 things you want to change, like first you want to change a wallpaper, then you want to change like uh, installing additional programs, or you want to uh, completely get rid of, let's say, KD and install uh, Gnome on it, or something like that, then you have for each of, the, of these tasks, you have to, to, to touch the, the, the live system again and again, and you have to do it all manually by typing some weird uh, commands in the, in, in the shell uh, prompt. So what we do is, uh, we don't do um, uh, top-down approach, but bottom-up. We say, hey, there's no difference between a, a live system and a normal system. Just the fact that there's live in it, RMFS installed in, on it. So let's treat it the same way. First, you bootstrap with dbootstrap or cdbootstrap in, into a, a directory on your hard disk. Then uh, you, you change into that change route. Install all the packages you want, do all the modifications you want. When you're done with that, you create the binary image. And optionally, because um, for, for if, you, if you start distributing that uh, image, you also want to comply to uh, the, the licenses for that software. So optionally, you can also uh, uh, create a matching source image that contains all the sources for your live image. And when you start distributing that through the internet, for example, you can point people to that source image and, and can say, look, there's everything inside. If you want to rebuild that image, just take the configuration inside and also the source code for the packages, and you're done. You don't need to, um, uh, to, to take care about manually tracking any file. If you would do that with Knopix, um, well, Knopix is special anyway. They don't even provide sources um, uh, for the Debian stuff they take, they only provide their own sources, which is kind of a gray area in GPL2. But um, if, you, if you do that like commercially, you get into big problems because you, as a distributor, have to provide the sources yourself. If you use Life Helper, that's just one command and you're done. The basic functionality of Life Helper is that you call a little script that is called lhconfig, and that one. Um, populates a directory, and in that directory you have a lot of uh, subdirectories which has, have a distinctive name. For example, um, one is called change root underscore local packages. So guess what, if you put in there a Debian package, that Debian package will, ins will get installed uh, into the resulting live system. Then there is, for example, um, um, uh, uh, there's a directory that is called like uh, change root underscore sources. If you put in there files that contains lines to a NAP repository, for example, uh, debinmultimedia.org, then guess what? That uh, <laughs> repository gets added to your live system, and if uh, you have configured the system to take uh, a package, for example, lame MP3 encoder or something like that, from that repository, it gets, it gets installed automatically. So this is a very flexible way uh, on how to keep your life configuration um, maintainable over the time. You only need this, this uh, config tree um, 
and you, you store that somewhere and you can always build the binary uh, images like USB sticks images or CD-ROM images out of it. Another big approach is that uh, we ensure that it's 100% clean build. That means um, normally if you build uh, a distribution uh, or if you bootstrap a distribution on your host system there are always some little things that make it from your host system into your uh, generated system. That starts with like uh, host names or network configurations or um, uh, also very tiny things like the abbreviation of your hardware clock. And we ensure that um, the resulting live system is in, non, not, in no way at all tainted by such things. Another important thing, and that's the most important one for me, uh, it's that it's completely non-interactive. That means uh, at some point you configure your, your config tree, you say which distribution you want, which architecture you want, if you want to build source images, which packages you want to have installed, uh, what other files you want to include, um, and all that kind of things. And once you're done with that, you just say, now build me that image. Probably it will take like two hours on, on a slow computer, uh, you can have, you can go and have a coffee. It doesn't matter, but because you, you never have to type anything uh, or press any button uh, during the build, it's all automatically. And uh, it's not just automatically; it's also reproducible. Um, imagine a system where you can, when you can, where you can create, uh, for example, live systems without uh, pressing a button. But every time you do it, you get some different results. That would be really bad. So we also ensure that by the mechanisms we use that it's 100% uh, reproducible. It's not that deterministically in the strong computer science um, understanding because um, the compression we use is not deterministic. deterministical. So you, you will get different uh, hashes for, the, for a rebuild of an image, but each of the files inside of that image are 100% identical. Um, some of the more nifty features I already told, but there are some more. For example, um, local presets. Have you ever installed uh, a package that asks you a question in Debian? Then you know that um, uh, it sucks to enter those questions all the time, because you already knew the answer before. So in the live system you do the same. You just tell a uh, life helper, uh, the answer to that question and he will pass it through, through the package automatically and uh, as I said you can have a coffee uh, in the meanwhile and don't worry about it. Um, local hooks is another mechanism. Uh, imagine you would like to change something really dirty in a live system. Um, for example, you want to get rid of user share doc in order to save space. So you create a, a, a two-line shell script that uh, issues rm rf user share doc and you put that file into user uh, in, into change with local hooks and it gets executed at the latest point when building the live system so that it's ensured that this command is executed at the last time and nobody is uh, changing anything after that command has been run a similar thing is that you can include files um, uh, plain files like um, Let's say you want a custom wallpaper, um, then you just put it into local includes, that's a folder, and you put it in, into, um, let's say you want to have it in user share, wallpapers, foobar, then you put the file into uh, change root, local includes, user share, wallpapers, foobar, and that gets automatically included at the right uh, place in your resulting live system. Of course, uh, we encourage people to create their own Debian packages for their local stuff because that's way easier to handle uh, and uh, you have sort of revision control over them. And you can put them in a, in a third party repository at a different place and include it at build time of the live system. But um, the local includes and the local hooks mechanism is like sort of a compromise for those who are not able uh, or do not want to spend the time of building uh, and learning how to do Debian packages on their own.
Another nice thing is that in the binary stage, when we create, when we put together the, the, the binary image for the resulting live system, you can also say that you want to have a Debian installer included. So, traditionally, a live system uh, was only uh, an image that uh, runs live, but you can also uh, install from it. And there we support uh, two different modes. One mode is a traditional one. Um, like any Debian installer CD. So you have just a combined CD. One is to run the live system, and one is to have a net install image or um, the first CD-ROM contents on that CD-ROM. That means that um, it will install, the, the installer launched from there is just a regular one, and it will behave just like the same as, the, uh, as you are used from Debian normally. But we have also another thing that is called Live Installer, and that's a, a, a really nice thing. Um, it hooks into the regular Debian installer, and it tells him that he should not use um, the packages from the CD, but the live system, um, the compressed file system of the live system. So what you get is the normal uh, look and feel of Debian installer, but you get your live system installed on the hard disk. And it's much, much faster than when you install uh, a regular system, because on the regu in the regular way, you install all the Debian packages each after one. In the live installer way, you only have to dump the rootfs uh, to the hard disk, and that's much faster. So, um, I'm very sorry, but uh, I can probably demonstrate it, right? Or do you have a local mirror? Okay, I, I try. <laughs> oh. I think <laughs> Okay, it appears that uh, the demonstration doesn't work. 
Um, so what I wanted to, to say was that um, there are a couple of people helping out with um, Debian Live from Brazil, um, but we always need more people. And um, one of the, the easiest thing you can do is um, you could help translating our manual to Portuguese. Um, another very easy thing is that uh, uh, we always need people to help testing stuff because um, live systems uh, are supposed to work in, in, in any combination possible, but uh, I only have like 10 computers with 10 different situations and it works there, but we want to make it uh, work everywhere with every crappy combination of hardware. And if you have uh, some crude hardware, we are very eager to know if everything works there. And um, um, the easiest way to contact us is either by coming to IRC, we are on Debian Live on ircdebian.org, that's OFTC, or by writing a mailing list to our very friendly mailing list at Debian Live uh, lists Debian.org. It's flame war free. <laughs> And, um, well, so I would be up for questions. Sure. Question was if I'm, I'm sticking around. <laughs> Uh, I'm sticking around until Saturday evening, so either I'm at the Debian booth or more likely in the speaker's room, and just look for me, I can help you. Um, it's probably not useful if I tell you more about that uh, here. Um, do you have any more questions? Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And again, I'm very sorry about uh, my broken notebook. Um, let's blame Sid. <laughs>